pulse is not that much more difficult than momentum is. As a matter of fact, it's actually simply the change in momentum. So impulse is simply change in momentum. Okay, now whenever we work with the word change in mathematics and in science, we use the letter D in, uh, that's Greek letter D, um, capital letter D, and it stands for difference. Okay, the difference. Now difference in mathematics is subtract. So the difference in momentum, this is the how we're going to write it, delta P is simply our future momentum minus what it used to be, our initial momentum. Now why would momentum change? If I have an object that's moving, what is changing that's causing its momentum to change? Well, hopefully you recognize that surely it's not mass. Okay, An object's mass doesn't easily change unless it's like losing things and that might happen but most of the times it's the velocity that's changing so our mass might stay the same and we might have a new velocity a future velocity minus um, our mass times our initial velocity what it used to be now with that in mind we can just simplify or change this formula a little bit and what we do is we take out mass as a common factor since it's multiplying both of those terms and we have future velocity minus final uh, initial velocity and this you see again it's the difference between future and initial so that's delta delta of what that's delta of velocity so what do we have here we have mass times change in velocity so this is the formula or one of the formulas for the change in momentum. Okay, now why would an object's velocity change? Okay, let's look at a little, uh, go back a little bit to those most important laws of Newton. So Newton's not his third law, in fact his first law says that an object that is moving at a constant velocity will continue to move at a constant velocity unless an external force is acting on it. This one is not moving at a constant velocity. Okay, Its velocity is changing. So it's either accelerating or decelerating, but its velocity is not constant, which means there is a net force acting on it. And that's what Newton's second law tells us all about. He says, okay, so if an object is changing, the, the net force that's acting on that object is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration of that object. Okay, now what is acceleration? Okay, what is acceleration? Well, acceleration is simply the rate of change in the velocity. In other words, the change in velocity over the change in time. Okay, and now I want you to just notice, look at that. Doesn't this look very familiar. Well, I hope it does because we just did it. Okay, there we go. The net force, I can replace that with a delta P. Okay, the net force acting on an object is equal to the change of the object's momentum divided by the change in time. Now, this is commonly referred to as the rate of change okay rate of change we always use rate of change when we're dividing with change in time the rate of change of momentum okay momentum okay this one Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. You see, same thing, I'm dividing with delta t. This is called the rate of change in momentum. And if we just change this formula a little bit, in other words, multiply both sides with a delta t, we get another formula. And that formula looks like this, that the net force times the change in time is equal to the change in momentum. There's a second formula. 
Now in this formula, what you should see is that the change in the momentum is directly proportional to the force that's acting on the object as well as the time that that force is acting on that object for. Okay, so the change in momentum is equal to the product of net force and time. In other words, how long the force is being applied to the object. Okay, so let me just look at a few examples where um, this is actually very well illustrated. In cricket, or in actually any um, handball sport, okay, any handball sport, for example cricket, when the ball is being caught, so there is someone that's stretching out his hands, <laughs> very long arms, okay, to catch an approaching ball. And what does he do when he catches the ball? He pulls back his arms. As the ball hits his arms, he pulls it back. Okay, so that the impact on his hands are not so large. Okay, so what is happening? Well, the ball has momentum. Because it's traveling towards him, the ball has momentum. And he wants to change that momentum from having momentum to stopping which means he needs to apply a force. Now that force will be equal to the change in the momentum divided by the change in time. In other words, how long the force he is applying to, to the um, ball. Okay, so what happens is if he can increase the time, he will increase the denominator. When I divide with a big thing, I get a smaller answer. So that's what's happening. The longer it takes him to stop the ball, okay, the smaller the force will be. So the force is indirectly dependent on time. Another example like that is in a car with a seatbelt. Okay, so if we have a person with his seatbelt on in the car driving, what happens is that if this car isn't an accident, okay, this car isn't an accident, the person doesn't come to rest immediately. What happens is that there's a little bit of elasticity in the uh, seat belt, which just means that since the car comes to an immediate stop, okay, the person doesn't come to an immediate stop. His change in momentum doesn't happen so quick. It takes a few milliseconds extra. And because of that, if it can even just double the time, Instead of taking 0 0.001, it takes 0 0.002 seconds to stop. Then the force will be halved. Okay, so here we can see a similar idea. The same goes for what they call crumpling zones on cars or crumpling parts. Okay, when the, the fronts of cars and the, and the backs are made softer, so that when there's an accident, there's some distance that's covered. And to cover that distance by crumpling up the the front part, it takes some time. And because the time of the forced application is increased, the amount of force needed to make that momentum change is less. The same again goes for airbags. Airbags does the same thing. It prolongs the time for the person's head to go from moving to stopping, okay? Giving it a softer landing. That's kind of what it comes down to. Okay, another more positive example is when we, again in sport, if we kick a ball, okay, if we apply a force to a ball, okay, in this case what we would want to do, um, let's take golf for example, or, um, so there's my pink golf club and ball, okay, the longer I can keep the club in contact with the ball, okay, if I increase the time, so change in momentum is equal to the net force times time. If I increase the time, I increase the change in momentum. In other words, from zero, it might reach a, a higher velocity. Same goes for any other uh, ball. If I kick a ball, the longer I can keep my foot in contact, the further it will go.